You know, there was this one incident where the Soviet Union thought that we were attacking them, and there was one guy who resisted launching a counter-strike, and that one guy prevented nuclear annihilation. One guy said, I think this is an error. This doesn't make sense. I'm, I'm not doing this. And that one guy saved us. I don't remember yeah. what the incident was. Like, what do you remember? Mm, yeah. What was the exact issue? So he, his name was Petrov, and he was, and it was in 1983. So what's even more remarkable about him is this was at a time of, you know, absolute animosity, enmity between the two nations. It was a really precarious time in the world. And Petrov was in a um, early warning radar system, like outside of Moscow, that reads data of possible incoming nuclear missiles. And he saw what he, what the, the radar screen, the radar scope was reading as five ICBMs coming from Wyoming, five. He knew that we would send a thousand missiles if we were going to launch. And so he questioned the data, which is just so remarkable in its own conception when you think about that. He questioned it and he didn't send it up the chain of command as a, as an, as a missile attack. So what was it? Well, I get into this in the book, which is, which is terrifying. So, okay, let me back up for a second of how good our technology is. So we have a system in space, a satellite system called Sp SIBRS, Space-Based Infrared Satellite System. It's like the Paul Revere of the 21st century. It is parked over our en enemies that have nuclear weapons, and it can see and detect a nuclear launch of an ICBM in a fraction of a second, Joe. Confirmed fact. That's why nuclear war begins and ends in 72 minutes, because the Sibir satellite system sees the launch, and then the U.S. nuclear command and control goes into, into, begins. And by the way, an ICBM cannot be redirected, and it cannot be recalled. What about these hypersonic weapons that can adjust their trajectory? They can go, they can move to different places. Like they look like it's going to Arizona and it yeah. goes to Chicago. So ballistic missiles are hypersonic. So a little bit of a misnomer there. Like, and also a hypersonic missile, let's just say it went from Russia to the United States. It might take an hour. A ballistic missile launched from a launch pad outside Moscow takes 26 minutes and 40 seconds to get to Washington, D.C. That number's not going to change. That's gravity. That's physics. That's what it was in 1958, 59, and that's what it is today. But isn't the new technology that it can alter its course? Yes, but our... Okay, so if you, if you go with that logic and you say, well, it can move around, mm -hmm. so it would be harder to shoot down. Right. As I explain in the book, and again, as was relayed to me by defense officials, we can't shoot down ballistic missiles, long-range ballistic missiles, with any kind of certainty or accuracy. It's not like the Iron Dome or anything like that. That is, the Iron Dome is almost like terrible for nuclear war, you know, for, for people to understand how dangerous nuclear war is because the Iron Dome can shoot down short-range missiles and mid-range missiles. So even the U.S. Aegis systems out on the sea, the Navy systems, shot down some of those Iranian drones. But they can't shoot down ballistic missiles. You want like the five-minute or the 30-second ballistic missile sure. lesson because this is what I need. I write for the layman, you know. I think part of the reason why nuclear war is not spoken about in the general public is because it's set up to be intimidating, you know. You'll hear a lot of defense people and analysts using very esoteric language, and, and it kind of excludes the average Joe or Jane, Joe or Annie. So I ask really basic questions like, how does a ballistic missile work? And it's very simple. That 26 minutes and 40 seconds I told you about. So there's three phases of a ballistic missile. It launches. It has boost phase. First five minutes, imagine a rocket. You've seen launches. That fire coming out the bottom. That boosts the rocket for five minutes. That's when it's detectable from space. 
Then it enters mid-chorus phase, which is going to be 20 minutes, arcing across the globe to its target. That is the only place where the interceptor missile can get it, if it can. And it's 500 miles up. And it's traveling at something like Mach 23, 14,000 miles an hour. Okay, so that's 20 minutes. And then the last phase is called terminal phase, appropriately so, 100 seconds. When the warhead, the nuclear warhead, re-enters the atmosphere, boom, hits its, explodes over its target. The interceptor system is designed to take out the missile in mid-course phase. So we have 44 interceptors. Remember I told you we have, one th we have a 1,700, let's say, nuclear missiles on, on ready for launch status. Russia has about the same. We have 44 interceptor missiles. How are 44 interceptor missiles going to go up against more than 1,000 Russian nuclear weapons coming at us? Never mind the fact that each interceptor has a 50% shoot-down rate. And that's by the Missile Defense Agency's spokesperson. So there's this perception that we have a system like the Iron Dome that could take out these incoming missiles, and we simply don't, which is why when nuclear war begins, it only ends in nuclear Armageddon.